So, a PRESPRA agreement is again on the table. Yesterday there was a subcommittee of the Western Balkans. What was your main message uh, regarding the PRESPRA agreement? This was a, an agreement which was uh, a difficult one for both sides, many years, uh, highly emotional. But also at the same time, it was an agreement that showed that we, the two, our two peoples, uh, can live together, can have a future together, can share um, common values, can work together. And uh, beyond the name, which is a, a difficult contextual and a different, difficult issue, uh, which we found, a, I think, a good solution, North Macedonia. So we both share this name of Macedonia, but we also make a clear distinction that there are two different countries. Um, and at the same time, it is not just a, um, an agreement between the two countries, which is very important. It's an agreement at the international level, it's an agreement with uh, guarantees both within Europe but also at the level of uh, United Nations and uh, the United States uh, and in the organizations we are, we are working together, such as NATO. And we, it opens up many possibilities. It already has opened up many possibilities. I think what uh, was necessary for things to have happened is to have more active relations, even from the Greek side. From the Greek government side, I have been critical that we were not moving forward. Although the Greek side accepted it, even those who were critical, even this government now, which did not vote for it, uh, they had basically accepted the agreement. And uh, we want it to be accepted on, from all on the other side too. The question is, do we really want to reopen this? I don't think it's possible, but let's say somebody wants to reopen it. Are we going to go back to fighting around the name? Are we going to go back to shouting at each other? Are we going to go back to stopping each other in international organizations? Are we going to use this problem? Because in Greece, as in North Macedonia, I think the extreme groups really, really, really use this when they cannot offer us something else about the real problems of people. To solve some yes, difficult questions. There are difficult yes. questions in fighting corruption, in fighting the mm -hmm. concentration of power, and mm -hmm. in, uh, in uh, wanting to control media, and wanting to be able to, uh, to hold power. And uh, uh, so they whip up emotions, symbols, and so on. It was easy, mm -hmm. but it's destructive. It polarizes. It polarizes within a country, it polarizes between countries. So I think we have to learn our lessons from this, that uh, we have uh, not used the opportunity 20 years, or more than 20 years, uh, since the, uh, this whole situation developed 30 years, what was it, since 1990s, yes. uh, basically. Mm. So we have been able to overcome it. So I think the press agreement has to be both uh, respected and uh, used as a basis for further development. We can cooperate, in, and we are, in the economy, we can cooperate in the European Union, we can cooperate in defense, we're already doing that. So I think this is a win-win situation. Uh, I think that at the same time, the democratic forces that believe in the cooperation of our peoples need to be more loud, more vocal, mm -hmm. and, uh, and really uh, fight for this friendship and uh, the future of our two countries. Yes. Well, Macedonian authorities, the new government, the prime minister, are insisting on your responsibilities, the Greek, from the Greek side, that you're not respecting your responsibilities, that you have three memorandums which are not ratified, and you have to set up road signs also. Yes. What is your comment about that? I agree. Mm -hmm. But that needs to be done with a dialogue. And um, we have been critical uh, of the government that it has not moved forward. And when you do not, when you let problems sit, they become bigger. Yes. So a road sign, a road sign sounds like a small problem, mm -hmm. but it can become a big problem if you don't solve it. And there are mutually from the other side also, I know, with passports, with ID cards, with things like that, 
So I think what is what we what we the lesson that we have is mm -hmm. don't let things fester. The problems don't go away. They can grow and all of a sudden you get worse. Look at what happened in uh, in Gaza. Everybody was saying, ah, the Palestinian problem is over. It's not, uh, in, you know, there are, let's look forward, let's see other things and so on. And all of a sudden it blew up and we are facing one of the most tragic wars uh, in the region ever and humanitarian disaster. So as a politician working with conflicts over many, many years, uh, we have to accept the opportunities that time gives us, use them, and not uh, try to not to allow time uh, when things are problems not to solve them, uh, and not to let them be used by people who simply like to use them for their own purposes. Not looking for the common good of their country or of our countries, but looking for their personal benefit and power grab. Yes. Okay, what, what are the consequences if the Macedonian side is not implementing? There are a lot of threats from the Greek side. Mitsotakis is uh, every day actually uh, talking about the consequences. It's, uh, I think the consequences yes. are, of course, that mm -hmm. we, 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 this will undermine our relationship, but um, I don't, I, I am not a person uh, who believes in threats. Uh, when we have already have a, a, an agreement, I think we need to sit down and see how we should further this agreement. So I think what should be done is the pressment agreement is there. We respect it from both sides. We see what we have to do further and we work on that. There may be some further negotiations. And in the meantime, we don't shout at each other and we don't try to undermine it. We don't try to play games. Let's be serious. We solve this problem difficult. I know people have uh, had their different views. There are many in Greece that have different views. There are many in North Macedonia that have different views, but we solve the problem. Uh, and um, let's respect it, let's be responsible, and let's see where are the areas where we can work. So it does mean more contact, more negotiation, and not microphone diplomacy. What does it mean, microphone diplomacy? It means shouting at each other. Mm -hmm. I shout at you, then uh, mm -hmm. when I shout at you, basically I don't shout at you. I shout at you so that other people hear me that I'm shouting. And insulting. So, and insulting. So, yes. I, mm -hmm. so I look like a hero. Mm -hmm. And then the other side wants to respond because then they also want to look like a hero. But they're not heroes. They are just weak, I believe, in not being able to be serious about the problem. For me, microphone diplomacy is, is weakness. It's being staying home taking a microphone and shouting rather than sitting down with the difficult problems and solving them. That's the difficult part. That's the strong politician, not the ones that shout. Yes. Okay. You, you mean you think that uh, veto, for example, is uh, that kind of policy? If, you, if the Greek side puts veto on, for, on Macedonian uh, negotiations, I think we should uh, avoid the language of veto mm -hmm. and we should try to avoid getting to that point. And that means sitting down now. Um, <clears throat> vetoes are, I, I usually say, are like nuclear bombs. Um, they blow things up and it makes it more difficult to put them back together. But um, of course, this exists in, in diplomacy. I myself, in different uh, contexts, have vetoed different things in the European Union or in NATO and so on. And, um, but I did not do it just to stop. I was looking to see, okay, how do we solve this problem? So let's not reach that point. Let's sit down and, uh, and work together. Okay. On the Macedonian side, the pr Prime Minister mentioned also HAC, the Human Rights Court, that it can be solved this issue, this dispute there. What do you think? We have already solved it. I don't know why we have to go to the court. If we, mm -hmm. if we had not solved it, then maybe go to the court. But why should we go to the? Why should we reopen it when it's already done? We, Do we signed and we yes. signed it. Mm -hmm. Our parliaments agreed on it, and you had a referendum. Um, a very difficult decision from from your side. I congratulate you for that, and the 
people of North Macedonia who did that and the strong leadership that was able to do it. Let's move forward. I know this will be questions, there will be issues, we can talk about our histories and so on, but um, let's not be captive of our histories and let's be learn from them, but move forward. And I think we also have another responsibility. It's not just to our own two peoples, it's to the whole region. We are in the Balkan region, there are many other conflicts. Let us show that difficult compromises can take place and can, we can move forward. We have Kosovo, Serbia. We have Bosnia, Herzegovina with difficult problems. We have, of course, other issues even with minorities and so on. So I think we need to be much more open and based on the basic values we have here in the Council of Europe, the European Union, which basically say we don't need to look for protectors, we can work together. We are protecting ourselves and our own our own societies, our own citizens, from our common values and our common understanding. Yes. The Macedonian uh, Prime Minister says, uh, I'm not using North, Mace <clears throat> sorry, North Macedonia in Macedonia, because it's my free I have freedom of expression, you know? I can use it outside, but in my country, I have my own right, my own freedom of expression, and I'm not going to use no. I'm not against freedom of expression, but mm -hmm. um, I'm also um, believe that if you have an agreement with someone, mm -hmm. you want to keep the agreement. So yes, freedom of expression, but do you want to break the agreement? Do you want to break? Do you want to create a sense? Of why are you doing it? In what sense? Since are you doing it to make uh, Greece feel bad, to have a reaction? Are you mm -hmm. making it to try to tell your own people that yeah, you are so strong that you can? do this, mm. um, is it really productive for your country? Because when you reach a point of being a leader, the question is not freedom of speech only, it's a, it's a question of what are the interests of my country. Mm -hmm. When you're a citizen, freedom of speech, you can be much more free, let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. When you are a leader of a country, um, you want to support freedom of speech for everyone, but you want to be responsible for what you say, because you are responsible for a whole country and for your relations with your neighbors and in the European Union. So I would say, yeah, freedom of speech, but also be responsible. Okay, because he says it's a constitutional right, freedom of expression, freedom of speech, which is bigger that I don't, con I, I a constitution don't, is bigger, you know, than both the pre PRESPA agreement. Yes. Well, I don't want to. I think a constitution it is more is a, important. I, a constitution is a constitution. Yes. I am saying, I, I, I don't know all his arguments and I haven't followed all his arguments, so I can't say. What I'm saying is, I'm not against freedom of expression. Mm. What I'm saying is, when you make, when you express yourself and you are in a position of huge responsibility towards your people, towards your neighbors, towards the international community, you have a responsibility in what you say. It has consequences. So, yes, freedom of expression, but freedom of expression also means that you think responsibly about what you say. That is your message and answer about that. Okay. And about the Bulgarian issue, it's the, is the, the I'm very same. Sorry. I'm yes. very sorry that, uh, and this is, I think, another question, and uh, we solved this problem which had slowed down uh, the accession process for North Macedonia towards the European Union and everybody was um, awaiting that this would be rewarded as it was expected because there were m many other reforms also that North Macedonia had done it was moving and it has been moving towards um, making necessary mm -hmm. steps becoming a member uh, in the European Union so I was sad that France first of all did not immediately accept the opening of accession talks yes. uh, and then this slowed down the process and then you had this Bulgarian issue. So I think it's, um, it's sad for North Macedonia but it's sad also for the region because uh, it also says that um, we, even though there was such a difficult decision by a country to change the name, it's, it doesn't sound maybe for some people outside our region 
okay, why not change your name? No, it's difficult. It's your identity, how you feel it, and you live with that. Um, <clears throat> so we should, we should congratulate North Macedonia rather than stop them. And I think um, our Bulgarian neighbors should understand that too. It's in their interest that we move forward, that we have North Macedonia as a full member of the European Union. Yes. Look, uh, Churchill said, and you know that, Balkans produce more history than they can consume. So my first interview was 20 years ago with you, when you were foreign minister. Yes. And we are discussing the, the, the same issue, we are talking about the name issue again. Mm. Yes. And Churchill, and we are quoting the, the Churchill quotes about uh, history. producing history all the time and the same history. And we cannot consume it, but we are still, we are not moving forward. Yeah, I think, um, yes, Churchill said that and he's a wise man, but uh, also uh, we should be wise in our region too because uh, we have often too much feeling weak, feeling insecure, feeling fear between us. Um, we, always, we have also looked for protectors, somebody out there to be on our side against somebody else in the mm -hmm. Balkans. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I said also in this discussion we had yesterday in the Council of Europe and also in discussion we had with uh, Mr. Tsipras and Mr. Zaev, in Athens a few days ago, I said, let us assume that we don't have the European Union, that there's no European Union. Are we going to take out the knives and start killing ourselves? Are we going to say that we don't want democracy? Are we going to say we don't want good neighborliness? Are we going to say we're not going to solve the problems? We're just going to fight and then look for protectors to come. And I said also yesterday, when we, when Greece was liberated from the Ottoman Empire, we had three parties. One was called the British Party, but that was the actual official name. The other was called the French Party, and the third one was called the Russian Party. So I said, why don't we have Balkan parties? Why don't we, the Balkan people, take our own um, fate into our own hands? And responsibilities. And responsibilities, mm -hmm. and look at these problems, rather than seeing how we can fight, fight each other time. and find somebody to be on our side. We have so much in common, and if we do that, we will show to Europe and to Europeans that we are even better Europeans because we have all this history which we have been able to go over. Europe was able to do it, but Europe sometimes goes back to its history too, and we're worried about that. So I think this is an important historical time to show fellow Europeans that yes, we can go beyond our conflicts, we've learned from them, and we have such an, a, an immensely rich culture and immensely rich friendships when we know each other and when we meet with each mm. other. We, uh, we need to work together. So this is the spirit I think we need to bring. To, to learn our own lessons. Learn our own lessons rather than waiting for... And so we are not always producing our history. There are others that are using us to produce mm. history and their interests too. Yes. So let's not start looking again for splintered Balkans where some people are with Russia, some people with China, some people with the West, some people with the East, mm. or whatever, or the Muslims, or the Orthodox, or whatever. Let us look and see how we together can live together. It's a dream that many uh, Balkans have thought about in the mm. past. Rigas Ferreos, who was one of the mm. um, fathers of the Greek Revolution, was believing in a democratic Balkans with all everybody living in peace and all the ethnic groups living in peace together. Um, let's think about what that means and that's why Europe is important for us. So we do have Europe, but let's take our own responsibility. In our hands. Yes. yes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. На 75 години од Советот на Европа, вие сте една од 75-те жени прогласана за една од највлијателните жени, значи станува збор за 75 жени во историјата на Советот на Европа, во кој спаѓате и вие. Точно за што сте работи? Се работи за иницијативата на Делегацијата на Европска унија, Постојаната мисија на Велика Британија 
i Holandija koji rešio da je ka imič odnaženja vo Sovjet od Evropa i njimnata zastapenost ne je dovoljna, posebno iz istorijeta. Svega ima dovoljno, da kažem, s ženi ambasadori i drugi ženi koji se del od profesionalna i od sostavna misijite, no ne beše taka niz istorijeta. Od ta pričina počne i prikaskata. Ženita niz istorijeta na Sovjet od Nevrpa, bi dek je ova godina, Sovjet od proslavao se 75 godišnjata. Znači, proces od beše interesen, se razgovaraše za to ko je, kako, zošto. Mislim, ne se raboti za najbolje te onite ženi, ja mislim... No to je definicija ta. Ženite koji davali na nacionalnom nivo ili na nivo na Sovjet od Nevropa nekako v najbolem pridones za unapredovanje to na rabotete na Sovjet od, promocijete na vrednostite na Sovjet od, i golem delo svoja ta karijera je posvetila na Sovjet od. Jaz bev izbrana zaradi to što i tako pišu u obrazloženije to, deka najboljem delo moja ta karijera je posvetiv na Sovjet od Nevropa i na implementacija na naši te obvrski kako država vo period od reči si 30 godini. Koliko što je nezavisnost. Da, koliko što je nezavisnost. Potoa stanov ambasador tuka i mislim da je moja ta aktivnost v promocijata na državata, no i to što se vrednostite na Sovjet od Nevropa isto tako beše prepoznajena. Ja sem jedinstvena aktivna ambasadorka koja je del od ovije 75 ženi. Inako se raboti za različni periodi, različni angažmani vo istorijeta na Sovjetu, od predsedatelji, premijeri, črnovi na parlamentarno sobranje, sudi, ima i drugi ambasadori od izminati od periodi. Tako da sve koja žena ima nekakov specijalen pridones spored žiri komisijeta kon unapredovanje to i promocija ta na vrednostite na Sovjet od Nevrope. Da, stanova zbor za promoviranje na demokratijata vo obrazloženije to i koje se odnesuva i na vas i na sita ženi v sušnost, ista ta cele promoviranje na demokratijata, na čovekovite prava, vladenje na pravo to. Na koji način se promovira cite ovije vrednosti za koji ste i vije jedan del? Imate pridones za njih? Znači, to se tri glavni stolba na aktivnostite na Sovjet od Nevropa. Jaz možem da kažem da ka izminatve dve godine presedava so raporterska ili izvestitelna grupa za demokratija. To je jedna od šest tela, pod tela na komitetu na ministri. I možda bi mojot najgolem pridones je što presedava v so ta grupa pred samitot, za vreme na samitot i posle samitot, što se održa minata godina v Rejkjavik, istorijski od samit po 18 godini, no grupata pod moje to vodstvo izraboci jedan od glavnih dokumenti za samitot, što se narekova principi za demokratije od Rejkjavik. To je dokument se smetao za jedan od glavnih postignuvanja i u princip ima namerata je na nekoj način da se utvrda kriterijumite za da se zapre generalno demokratsko nazaduvanje vo Evropa. Da. Dobro, vi ne imate mandat da govorite za političke teme koje se odnesuvaat za Makedonija, no vaši od doprinos v sušnost se odnesuva i za Makedonija vo sama ta Makedonija preko vaša ta nagrada promovira vrednosti, promovira demokratija, vladenje na pravotu. Znači, to je nagrada i lično za vas, no i za Makedonija, i za diplomatijata, no i za državata generalno. Promocija na sita tije vrednosti. Se saglasam sa vas, deka nagrada to ne je samo za mene, se priznava deka 
da kažem, preko mojot angažman, no ne samo mojot angažman, moram da kažem da kaj mnogo drugi luge vodržavata u administracije, to u ministerstvo za nadorešnje raboti, profesionalno raboteja na ispolnuvanje na standardite od naše članstvo u Sovjetu od Nevropa. Tako da nagradata da ja smetam samo kako moja, tu koji na site ti je, moji kolegi i drugi eksperti koji učestvova vo rabotata na Sovjet od Nevropa, na razni među vladini komiteti koji izrabotuva standardi vo sita ovije tri sveri što ti spomnavte i taka pridonesova za razvojot na takozvano meko pravo, no i niza konvenciji o strana na organizacije, to je na koji najgolem deo nije sme členike. Dobro, interesno je što na 75 godini se dava akcent na ženit. Pred 75 godini mnogo mnogo zemlje vo svetu od vopšto nemali nikakvi prava ženita, govorim za ženita ili ženskite prava ne bile promovirani, prava vopšto i da se glasa i svega akcentot odenoš se stava na močta koja ima ženita. Problemot je često i vse ušte go ima, da ka ženite se nekada u pozadina deka koga se održal prvi od sostanotnog komitet na ministri, ne imalo ni to jedna žena, minister. To je bilo slučaj mnogo dolgo, imalo isključaci, među ta najgolen del od ženite koji seda kao ministri, no i ambasadori, beja maži. Među ta... Što se sluči u Međuvreme? U Međuvreme se smenija rabotite. Mislim da je jednostavno, ako se zalagaš za standardite na Sovjet od Nevropa, ako se zalagaš za jednakvost i jednakve možnosti, togaš ženite apsolutno mora da bide deo ta prikazka. I akcentu da se stavi tukmu na njih. Da, i u princip, včera razgovarame za feministička politika i objasnovanje to je deka feministička, ta diplomatija, se izvirujem, objasnovanje to je u princip deka feministička diplomatija ne se odnesova samo fokusu da bide stavljena žena, to je tukaj na jednakvost. Tako da, mislim deka ulogata na ženite vo Sovjet od Nevrka, kako vo sekretarijatu od Bideki i minatota godina u isto vreme imame pet ženi koji rakovodac su glavni instituciji vo Sovjet od Nevrka, generalni sekretar, presedatel na sud od komesar za čovjeko i prava, registrat na sud od i generalni sekretar na parlamentarno sobranje. Tako da, to beše, mislim, jedna izvonredna, jedinstvena situacija, koja se menova svega. Međutom, i u toj period se sluči jedno osvestuvanje da ka ženite na vistine imat moć da rakovodat i to da rakovodat dobro, i da smenat niza raboti vo institucijite, vo Sovjetu na Evropu. Od druga strana, jaz koga dojdu, imaš i samo osm ambasadori, ženi, sega već imame 16 od 46 državi členki, što je napredok i ima najevi za ušte poveke i... Sve to se menuva. Sve to se menuva. Da, da, da. Dobro, jaz blagodanam za ove razgovore. Nema, zašto ja samo da kažem da ka... Ne se samo vije se dum despet ženi najvažni i najvlijateljni, ima mnogo drugi ženi vo sita državi členki i vo sekretarijatot ili na rakovodite poziciji vo Sovjet od Nevropa, koji isto dao golem pridones za negovi od razvoj i negovata rabota, tako da i toga treba se ima predvide, kao se dum despet ženi ne je dovoljno predstavitelno. Благодарим. Благодарим. Благодарим на вас. Благодарим.